Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation with psychic Sylvia Brown from the afterlife. So just prior to creating or setting up the, the video today, I felt like I should go and check out some of the comments from viewers from my first video with Sylvia Brown, which you can find on the playlist. And I gotta be honest, I was like, oh, maybe I don't wanna talk to her again, just because a lot of the comments were really intense. And let's just say dense, <laughs> let's say that. It's very clear that Sylvia Brown was a polarizing figure and although she is seen as doing some very groundbreaking work in the area of spiritual development and psychic development, there is a lot of criticism for her. And I think it's because she was so much in the public eye and for the lack of understanding and education of the general public about psychic work, when people don't understand it, it's really easy to judge, I think, and be afraid. And so, I am a little bit still like, oh, do I really want to talk to her again? Yes, I do. I do as a psychic. I'm a psychic and a medium and a psychic life coach. And so I want to talk to her again. And I wanted to take into account some of the comments, the actual real questions that people had shared from that video with her initially. So today with Ms. Sylvia Brown, we're going to talk about some some of the topics we're going to talk about is her spirit guide, Francine, that she spoke of often. We're going to talk about the afterlife and how it might be different. And if we have time, we're going to talk about karma. And there's a couple other topics I was thinking of. So let's see how this goes. All right. I'm going to ask her to come in. She says, why are you so afraid, Bridget? <laughs> why are you so afraid? She says, it's the people that don't understand are the people who, who leave the hateful comments. I'm like, okay, okay. She said, why are you so afraid? Don't let other people change you. Don't let other people decide for you what you're gonna do. I know, I know, I know that. I know, thank you, Sylvia, for saying that, for connecting. I mean, instantly there was so much like dense energy around the heart chakra. I feel super guarded and shielded and not in a good way, my friends. Usually at Above Life Channel, when I'm channeling, it's like easy. And right now it's like, oh, I wanna talk to you, but I also know that after posting this video, there's gonna be a lot of talk and I don't, I don't even know. All right, maybe we, shouldn't, maybe we shouldn't even let people comment. What do you think about that, Sylvia? She says, I think you need to focus on the good and not let people who hate you define you. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. I can't even, oh God, I can't even. I wanna talk, so what did I wanna talk to you about? She just said, so what do you wanna ask me, Bridget? Besides what you think, the, what these other people like wrote down, she says, what do you wanna ask me, Bridget? I wanna ask you about advice you would give to people about psychic or being psychic. What advice would you give to other psychics? People who are psychics and mediums and do this work, what advice would you give to them, us, doing this work? You really cannot care what other people think of you because if you do, you're done, it's over. It's over. You can't let other people mistreat you or others, other people, others, others mistreatment of you create your identity. That doesn't define who you are. And if you let it, then you're done. It's over. Then you're not cut out for this work. Okay, so the thick skin concept has to be at play. I have been doing channeling online, like publicly, like in YouTube for a couple of years now. And prior to that, for 15 years, I've done it in groups and things and in public settings and events and that kind of thing. And by far, YouTube is the toughest as far as the anonymity of trolls and things like that. It, it's difficult, that part's really, it, it is difficult. And I think it would be difficult for anyone, but doing 
spiritual work, it does put you much more in a vulnerable state because we are so clairsentient, so we feel. She says it's empathic. Everything is connected in the heart. So you can tell the pure motivation of someone. And when someone is hurting, they're going to lash out. And if they want to target you, they're going to target you. And that's just how it is. That's the way it is. You cannot let that bother you. If it bothers you too much, it's going to change the way you do your work. And you cannot have that. Someone, else, someone else's negativity is controlling you. Do you want that? It's not going to help anyone. You have to really know in your heart of hearts that what you're doing is truly divine. It is truly guided by spirit and that you are helping the spirit who is in the afterlife make communication and you're helping the spirit of the person that you are connecting to or the family that you're connecting to, to heal. And that's the point of it. It's the learning and the healing. It's not, it's not uh, a sequence of events or fact checking. And, and that is what psychic work has come to be. It's come to be something that must be scientifically proven and they're the biggest competition for psychic or spiritual development work is religion, formalized religion. And there's so much dogma and so much structure around those beliefs that you cannot win there. Don't even, don't even bother to enter into a fight there. You cannot win there. You just need to focus on the people that you can help and let that be enough so that you can continue the work. All right, this is a good point, Sylvia. You, someone had said or talked about maybe like at one point, I think I'm trying to remember the comments about you creating a religion or you starting a church or that kind of a thing. And that some of the teachings were a little bit, um, well, they, well, there are some questions about that. Let's say that because I don't know enough about it to speak about it as a person here. So I'm just gonna ask you to describe or explain this. She says, it was an effort to put everything under one umbrella to bring some kind of an order to things that were only concepts. Things like spiritual communication, contact with spirit for so long, it, there's so much focus on the paranormal and then that created an environment where things were being done to you by spirit and so spirit received a lot of negative and then a lot a lot of negative publicity or a lot of um it's it's more than fear it's more like a this this uh real sense that you don't have control over any of it and it just gets done to you that there's spirit comes and goes as they please and because you're a human you're just um, a victim of that or you are susceptible to that and and it's really um, it's very dramatic and it's the things that nightmares are made of and as a an attempt to create some kind of a way to to let people have control over their lives and in a way where you had some control or influence over the afterlife and over your spirit evolution. That's where the under one umbrella came from. Okay, so was it like a religion? It almost feels like you guys are church status and I feel like it's for financial reasons. So was it a business move? You know, I, I never, I, I wasn't that great with my finances. I had some troubles with that. And um, I was, uh, she says, she started kind of say, she's saying um, I was swindled. It's what she's saying, the words that she was using and misled, misguided by, it looks like there's some tax stuff and things like that and misguided. And she says, that happens to people all the time. Well, how does it happen to you as a psychic? Here's a good question, Sylvia. And I get this question too. Well, 
how come you don't know? Like, how come you just don't know? You can't, and if you can predict the future for other people or if you can connect with spirit, then how come you don't know everything? And how come you don't know that what's gonna happen or how, why, how come you couldn't have seen that or how, well, how did you not know that? She says, what a delightful question. Hmm. It comes from a place of judgment, doesn't it? It sure does. It sure, it sure does, yes. And, but, but that's no, but you have to understand that people, the human mind is programmed to rely upon other people telling you what to do. And when you recognize that there's more than just your mind, then you, and then you have to take responsibility for all the other stuff and the choices that you make and the behaviors that you have. And that's what spirituality and spiritual connection does. It causes you to have to, it forces you into a place of accountability and responsibility and choice. And that isn't necessarily a freedom that people want. People want to just know and not have uncertainty. And that's a mind thing. That's a, a mind control human life thing. That is the way humans are made to function in a very narrow lane in order to keep a level of comfort and certainty. So for many of us, our spirit is trying to encourage us to grow, to evolve, and to understand the broader picture of who we are and what we have access to. And that blows the mind, literally makes people crazy. That's why people over the years have been committed and who have been deemed as having mental illness when they have psychic development or psychic advancement or spiritual experiences. Either they're, they're vilified or they're praised or hailed as a saint. And there's really not a lot of in between, or at least there hasn't been up until about the 2000s. I'd say right after um, the 9-11, the terrorist attacks, about 2002, 2003 is when things started to really open up more broadly and there was this greater energy awareness of empathy and of sensitivity and this energy connection between hearts and souls of people that we are more than just our lives and our bodies and expression. And so there was definitely a, a shift then. But to answer the question, you can't, it's not possible to predict with 100% accuracy and be consistent with that because it's a moving target. It's a moving target. If you really, if the person asking really understood about energy and intuition, they wouldn't even ask the question because they would know that there are many variables and many factors, including free will and choice and the power of the mind. In addition to other, there are other um, sequences of events and current events and um, natural disasters and weather and things that really play in. So it is, it is not likely that it's, well, it's rather, rather it's very likely that psychics would be wrong. And I'm not suggesting that you should let that go, but I'm suggesting that you need to remember that these are people that are filtering through their mind, their ego, and their own prejudices are introduced and their own experiences are used to define and declare the messages that are coming in. And so there is a lot of room for misinformation and miscommunication. So, so then Sylvia, how do you say then, how would you say that then you should go to a psychic or you should go to a medium to help you connect then? Why, why should people do that at all then? Well, there wouldn't be a need for it if people would be more open to their own spirituality, their own understanding of their own spirit. And instead of holding that part of you down and keeping that part of you, you know, people say all the time, especially women say all the time, how they feel like they're being held back or they're just blocked or they, they don't understand why they can't just break through this cycle in relationships or find the right man or, 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 or make that career change or invest that time in, in uh, working for 
working towards some some kind of dream or goal that they have, you know, and they just can't understand why that is. Well, it's because you're not connected to your spirit. You're not. You're ignoring a huge advisor, a huge part of yourself that's given yourself advice. That's why there's a need for psychics so that we can share that information for you until you can build enough of a relationship and be kind enough to yourself to do it for yourself. And that's why there's a need for psychics and mediums. And that is why people are so critical of psychics and mediums because they can't do it themselves. And when they can't do it themselves to a degree of certainty, there is doubt and skepticism. And because they don't believe in that for themselves, they can't believe enough in themselves and a higher power and a higher part of who they are and how great that is and that, that capacity inside of them, they can't believe in that in themselves. So why would they believe in it in you? They can't, they just can't. You can't expect people to just accept things that they don't understand. You can't, you can't. But what you can predict is that they're gonna be angry, they're gonna be afraid, and they're gonna be critical because it's new information, it's a new process to them, and it's challenging all of their beliefs. And if anyone is ever challenged, their opinions or views are challenged, they're going to fight back. There's gonna be pushback. It's not an easy process. That's why there's a need for it. That's why, that's why. So it's so much easier for you to have someone else, a neutral third party, share with you information from your own spirit because we aren't in a position to judge that information. We just share it. And then it's up to the person who's receiving the reading to receive it and how they're gonna receive it. You can't control that. You can't control that. You cannot control that. You just have to give up trying to make the outcome a certain way, even if the person expects, okay, yeah. Okay, Sylvia, she's really, really chatty. So even if a person comes to a psychic or medium, especially like a medium I've found, this is what happens when people contact me and they just want me to talk to their loved one in heaven or the afterlife, let's say that, and they want to talk to one person specifically and they expect that person to share a specific detail about something, one thing, and they're looking for one thing. And when you're in a connection in a mediumship, oftentimes a different person will come in first and other people will come in and they're all, they're all related, they're part of the same family or maybe somebody that recently passed that was like a friend's son that committed suicide, for example, will come in first before your dad will come in, that kind of thing. It happens all the time with me anyway, with me as when I'm just doing mediumship. And because I honor the spirit and when you work with spirit, you are in service to spirit and the human person only wants this one thing, but this is not like target. You don't just pick it off the aisle and it's like on a box, on a can, on a shelf that you just put in and it's, here it is, here's my order. It's not like a drive through McDonald's, you know, it's not like that. It's dynamic, it's relationship and relationships are tough for all of us to understand the energies of and the metaphysical parts of them are very detailed, okay? so. I find that people will sometimes really focus on one thing and it doesn't always come through right away. It takes a while and that creates like a block or a barrier to anything else. Like they won't hear anything else you tell them until they hear this. And you would think that maybe that person, that father would come through and share that just so that it would cut the psychic or the medium a break. But that's not what the session is about. It's about that person believing for themselves. It's not about them being convinced or persuaded to believe based on proof or evidence. It's about that person having to believe, being open-hearted, open-minded for themselves, or they're not gonna get anything from the experience except, well, they're gonna get more than they realize but they're not gonna get that one piece of information and so they're gonna hold on to that so that they don't change any of their views or beliefs. So they can stay in their pain, they can stay in their grief process because for some reason that energy of that grief process or that pain is serving them in some way. And maybe they're just not ready. That's sometimes experience that I've had. Usually it works out and I have a very real conversation with the person and I say, look, if you have this expectation, I'm not the psychic for you because my goal is to help the spirit heal and evolve. And that means your spirit. I'm not here to prove anything or convince anything to you or convince you of anything. That is not my job. 
If you can't do that for yourself, why, how would I be qualified to do that? Mm -mm. This is a healing process. And if you're not gonna be open and ready for that, then I can't help you. Let's be done now, that kind of thing. And I've done that in session. I've stopped and said, hey, if this is what you want and this is the only thing you want, I'm not, it's not, I'm not a coffee shop and I'm gonna make your, your coffee exactly that way. That's not what this is. It's a dynamic relationship-based healing experience. And maybe that's different for other psychics and mediums, is it? And she said, you bet it is. She says, you bet it is, you bet it is, you bet it is. And that's part of the problem. There has become a industry of psychics and mediumship work that has created a false sense of this ability to deliver certainty and security. And it's not about being accurate or being right. It's about giving people what they want. And that compromises integrity. That compromises the very point of spiritual contact, of spirit contact. It's about communication. And you can't, you don't embellish or lie or make up details. You do, it's not about manipulation and psychology. It's about energy. It's about that communication and honoring the spirit. The human is paying for the session, but it's helping their spirit, their own spirit. And it's working for the spirits and the afterlife that are coming through needing to share, wanting to share. So it's a whole bunch of orchestrated contacts and it really is you're you're 100 right on bridget it is about the relationships and until humans evolve enough to understand that the relationships you have the one with yourself your self-worth your self-value believing in yourself as part of the highest good of the universe that you are part of that highest good and instead of ignoring it or being scared of it or being skeptical of it then nothing is going to change for that. But there are people who are ready for that, who are here to change that. And thank God, because you and anyone else who is watching this video, if they're open to receive that, will understand that they have that power. So from the afterlife, Sylvia Brown, you are giving us like a powerful platform. You guys, she's very agile. She's moving around a lot. She's not like in physical pain. She talks to me about having like a fibromyalgia or some kind of a arthritis -y stuff in her bones or osteoporosis, like a brittle bone kind of thing and in human life. And now she's like very engaged and it looks like she's doing a TED talk and she's like talking and moving her arms and she looks healthy. Healthy, her hair is like a red color and it's actually shorter, kind of like mine a little bit. It's shorter and um, oh, let me ask you a couple of things because there were a couple of um, comments too. This is going to be a long video, you guys. Sorry. Hopefully you love it. <laughs> but um, so they asked me, um, someone asked, so you used to say that people look like they're about 30 in heaven, like in the afterlife when you connect with them. They look like they're about age 30. And just so the audience knows as well, I, that's how about usually I see people too. And I, I could totally respond to this question myself as a psychic, but let me ask you, Sylvia. So is that true? Do you still believe that? That was the question. She says, in part, it's partially true. People do tend to show up how you will most recognize them or at a place in their lifetime that they felt their best, you know, that there was so much joy and it was, they considered a good part of their life. So if they're, if the best part of their life was when they were 18, they might show up when they're 18. And that's the choice of the spirit. That's the choice of the spirit. So I've had this happen in session too, where I've seen people, oh, I could share with Elvis too, with famous people. So I've seen Elvis in different states of his career and his life, and he'll show up in the jumpsuit sometimes, and he'll show up in the, you know, the young Elvis and sometimes, and so he looks different and sometimes he'll show up in his military uniform. And it just depends on the context of the conversation that we're having. So that makes sense to me. But oftentimes, yeah, people do look very um, 
they tend to look very youthful. However, I have talked to some grandmas and some grandpas and some mo mothers who are much older and dads who are older too, and that's how their loved ones remember them. And so sometimes they'll show up that way and just very happy and filled with love and at a loving time in their lives. So, and they can, then they can sometimes, then they sometimes like to brag, especially the men it seems like. And sometimes the ladies too will show me, because I'm clairvoyant, images of them when they were younger and much better looking. <laughs> They'll show me that. Like a lady will show me her hair all done and beautiful and young and vibrant and filled with life. And then a guy will show me what a good, good looking guy he was, that kind of thing too. So, so I get, okay, all right. So will you talk to us about Francine, your spirit guide, and talk to us a little bit about spirit guides, if you would. Well, what would you like me to share? Where would you like me to start? So did you meet Francine in the afterlife? That was one of the questions someone had on the comment um, on the previous video. Yes, she actually took me to the other side. And I've met her before. I'd met her before in my experiences in the afterlife. So I had a few, she's showing me like a few unconscious moments where she met Francine in the afterlife. Like it almost looks like she's been over like on death's door before and had connections with Francine there. But she says, it's rather unusual for people I know. And Francine looks like she has a big long braid. I don't know if that's how she looked or she described if, if you described her like that in human life or not, but that's how she's looking to me, a big long braid. And she says, my relationship with Francine in this lifetime was a little bit different. I think some people would be startled by the type of connection or uh, materialization that I had with her. She literally looked almost like a person to me when she would show up many times. Sometimes I would just hear her talking to me or calling my name. And other times I would physically see her like a person, like I would see you um, in, in real life, in real life. And I think that that would be disturbing to many people to have that experience. So I don't know if it was just unique to me, but it was something that I was able to so, so I knew her. So when I, when I left my physical body, it wasn't, it wasn't different than what I thought it would be. It was the same kind of, of connection with Francine that I had. So has Francine reincarnated? Yeah, she said it's her turn, um, but it's gonna take about 20 years for her to fully round out and then come back down. Um, we spend time together, yes. Um, it's like we're sisters, um, we're kindred spirits, but Francine is still a spirit guide and and serving, um, and okay, so she says this word, I'm not really cool with it, but I'm gonna share it because Sylvia says it. Some of my followers, Francine has been in contact with some of my followers and takes care of some of my loved ones. And so we spend time together and we talk, we communicate, we connect, and um, she continues her work on the human plane. So before she, cho she's gonna choose to reincarnate in about 20 years, she's what she said. So, all right, there we go. All right, so the afterlife, is it different than you thought it was gonna be? Well, you know, that's a funny question. Through the experiences I had over the years and the, the sessions I had with people, I talked to a lot of different kinds of spirits and I have met spirits on this, the ethereal plane in many different states. So I don't know that I had an expectation of like going through a tunnel or being in a beautiful garden or the afterlife place. I knew that there were many different types of scenes that the spirit could um, create and communicate from. I wasn't afraid of death, but I think that some people might feel that I was. Well, can you expand on that a little bit? Well, I spoke about, in some of my work, you, this might make you feel uncomfortable, Bridget, but in some of my work, I spoke about the energy of the dark forces or of the evil spirit in the spirit world, just as there is evil in, in human existence, there, there's also that counterpart in the afterlife. So because of the experiences I had in my life, the traumas and the abuse and the the tragedies that I experienced. I, and I'm not blaming anyone for any of that. I, I accept that as my, my path. 
I took on a lot of I took on a lot of I can't find the right word you guys darkness is the right word she said I have uh, part of the darkness and I think some others when communicating with me could feel that part and for those who were intuitive or empathic it was hard for them to handle. And I think that's what pushed people away or, or created some cynicism in regards to the messages I would share or the readings I would do. I think there's a high probability that that edginess that you feel, that you've mentioned and, and spoke of in a previous channeling session, is something that um, was a part of me. And that that part of me, I think it's fair to say that I was afraid of that dark part of me. I don't claim to say that I tried to manipulate anyone or make anything up or, or, and I, I do not, do not question my work ethic. Do not question my work ethic. Do I think I could be very sure of myself? Yes. Very strong willed? A hundred percent. And Sometimes the way that you, the levity in which you present the information and you share the message is more important than the actual message itself. So do I think that I influenced others in believing or in pushing them away to create non-belief? Yeah, yes, based upon the way I delivered the message. And I know it feels as though at times when you watch interviews and things with me that I was rather cold or not touchy-feely, not warm, warm and feely, as you would say. But it's because there isn't that, there wasn't that, that those feelings around the communication for me. It was very separate from myself. And part of that comes from acknowledging that within me there was darkness. And the feeling of not wanting to contaminate the session with my stuff, my personal stuff sort of gave me a personality of being very abrupt with people or short with people or curt and you would say bossy Bridget you would say bossy but that's not okay that's not that's not a good enough excuse and I think I could have helped a lot more people had I been able to help myself and felt like I deserved more healing in the human state so have you been able to experience healing in the afterlife? Oh, yes, yes. And there are angels here, by the way. There are archangels. And she says, she's saying to me, they love you, Bridget. I know, I work with archangels. If you don't know that at Above Life Channel, I don't really talk about like deities, saints, God, goddesses, that kind of thing, totem animals. I really don't talk about that stuff specifically in videos because I'm talking to afterlife influencers and celebrities. But I love angels and I work with them a lot. They're very non-denominational. They're very androgynous, both masculine and feminine energy. I love angel work. Beautiful, awesome. So thank you for that, because she literally says, Michael. Michael is a great protector, a very great protector. She said, everyone deserves mercy, everyone. That's a powerful message for you, let that land. Everyone deserves mercy, everyone. It's like the feeling I get you guys is gifted to yourself. Like she's very truthful. She's very a straight talker. And I respect that. I respect that. But I can understand how people would feel kind of like she was cold or maybe thought she knew everything, but it wasn't about that, you guys. It was not about that. Again, I'm not, I don't want to defend you because you can communicate for yourself, Ms. Sylvia Brown. And can other people channel you and connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. They do it all the time. She says they do it all the time. All the time, I'm always talking to people. I'm always helping people out. We're always doing workshops and classes and it feels like somebody almost channels her and is continuing some work, like advanced work in regards to repairing or healing some of the harm that near the like third quarter of her life, things kind of started to be a little scattered and it, things weren't so clear and she wasn't so, um, she wasn't as in alignment with her light as she could have been. It's how I would describe it, but she's showing me things are really scattered and she's not making excuses, but the last third of her life was much like the content that she would have created, books that she would have done in the last like quarter maybe, um, 
la or last even last third of her life would not be as helpful or impactful to you as the stuff early on. Look at her early on stuff is what she's saying. Her early on works and books and things like that. So, okay. All right. Wow, this was awesome. I'm glad we had this conversation. I'm glad. I'm glad. She said, was it worth it? I said, I hope so <laughs> for me. I mean, I'm going to keep the comments on so you guys can comment, but oh my goodness, we're going to have to watch those though because like I said, you're kind of polarizing, Sylvia. No offense to you. <laughs> she says, none taken. It's all about the person who's writing the comment. It has nothing to do with you, she says. That's just the ego telling you all those negative things that you don't need to be focused on. She's right. She's right. All right, my friends, thank you so much for watching this very long video, Channeling with Sylvia Brown in the Afterlife. What did you find most beneficial? Any aha moments? Go ahead and put that in the comments below. If you are interested in watching every week, I share new channeling videos on Mondays. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification if you want to be notified when those are live. Again, every Monday here at Above Life Channel. The purpose here is always to inspire you, your spirit, to give you some hope, to encourage you to live your life because this, this is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.